Well, Guy, uh, it looks like a nice view behind you. Where are you? I've made it across the border from Angola into Namibia, and I've been here about three days. And I'm about, I suppose, 300 kilometers south of the border at a place called Onguma Resort Campsite, just by Atosha National Park. And how's the driving been since you left Zambia, where we found you on holiday and went back to Angola? The roads are brilliant, so that, that, that's easy. I haven't, there was one bit of track which was quite tricky, but I had a friend out here staying with me who came out specifically to help me and to accompany me and to do some of the driving for me, because as I've said before, driving a manual car is not easy, especially when you're a bit worn out. When you're fine, it's absolutely fine. When you're not fine, it's just disastrous. So he's been here helping me do that. So um, we've covered lots of mileage, and the van has had a couple of things done to it, and it's working fine. So you're not such an enemy of VW as you were a few a few weeks ago? <laughs> no, no. Uh, in fact, they I, I called in the VW garage in um, just south of the border. I can't remember the names of any of the towns. They all, they all begin with O and have Ks in them. And, um, and the garage there was completely brilliant. And they serviced it for free, did everything they needed to do to it. I got some new tyres. My tyres were all getting a bit tired. And um, and they, they've been brilliant. VW Namibia has been brilliant. What was your experience of Angola? Everybody said it would be expensive, dangerous, difficult, and not worth going to. My experience was completely the opposite. It has been the best country we've been to so far, and I've enjoyed it, um, and I've met more nice people who are friendly and kind there than any other country so far. Quite, quite the opposite of what people said. And it wasn't you know, $100 for a hamburger. The food was normal, but slightly more expensive than normal, but not ridiculously priced. We stayed in accommodation, which wasn't ridiculously expensive. And we camped in the middle of nowhere, so that was free, of course. And everywhere we went, to a man, even the police on the checkpoints would not stop and ask. They wouldn't stop you. They'd wave you. And if they did stop you, they just want to say, oh, you're from England. Where have you been? Nobody asked for it. There was just, in every possible way, it was fantastic. So you're recommending Angola for a holiday? I am. And I've said that to everybody in Angola. I can meet. The problem is that getting in is quite tricky. They're very fussy about visas and that sort of stuff. And we've lodged the main point. If they made it easier, more people would come. And it's, it's, we drove down the coast route, um, which I can describe in more detail if required. But basically, there's, there's, there's big, good main roads built by the Chinese from north to south. And then they're starting to work on the coastal roads as well, but the gravel at the moment. And the coast is delightful. And there's nobody there. Nobody there. You have the whole place to yourself. Fuel is practically free. People are very friendly. Food is available everywhere. Couldn't be a better place. All built on Chinese money? <laughs> Well, they've got a lot of oil, of course, because um, they've got a lot of offshore oil. So they've got they are exporting more than they're importing because they do everything for themselves. They've learned the, the hard way, having had 40 years of warfare and just 10 years of peace. They've got to do an awful lot of rebuilding pretty rapidly. And they are growing things themselves, making things themselves, doing everything they can themselves. And we met some wonderful people who told us all about it and described the history of it and the, the, the scenery. Uh, I can't recommend it strongly enough. Uh, and... Along the way, of course, your your whole mission is to raise awareness of Parkinson's. Uh, yeah. How's that been going? I've only managed to do one interview in Luanda because it's all in Portuguese and it's a bit tricky. And it was a great success. It was the English speaking department of the national radio. And uh, I was on for about 45 minutes with their interviewer telling them the story. And of course, like everywhere, people are very unfamiliar with Parkinson's in Africa unless they have it themselves or they, they know somebody in their immediate family. And this particular chat was completely taken by the story of what we were trying to do, um, the details about Parkinson's, the the bad things about Parkinson's, there's not many good things, of course, and was 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 kind of moved to tears, actually. And it was a it was a very, very strong interview that he that we had and would have got the message out to many more thousand people in in Angola, all, albeit the English speaking people and the diaspora as well. And in general, how do you think your 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 message is coming across uh, on this journey? When I meet people uh, on a routine basis, they are completely bowled over by the fact that I'm doing what I'm doing. I, I, I've never been terribly sort of... Um, I, I've always thought of this just getting in the car and driving from north to south, which is lucky because it's not. If I'd known how difficult it was, as I said, I probably wouldn't be doing it. But it's just, you know, just driving down the road. But the people I've met have been in awe of what I'm trying to do. And when they hear about the fact that I've got this bloody thing... And um, and what I, and and where I've got to so far, uh, and and it, and it opens doors because people just bend over to help, and they they couldn't be more helpful when they hear that I've got this problem. They they have me in, they feed me, they 
look after the vehicle for me. They do everything. It's 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 it's, it's very humbling. The whole the whole experience is very very humbling indeed. And how is your Parkinson's at the moment? I, I've just been out for a walk, and then halfway around the walk, I found myself seizing up. But um, yeah, I know your 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 symptoms are actually quite a lot worse than mine. I think. Um, I what I'm doing now, I'm taking a lot more pills than I than I have in the past because I was advised before I left the UK this time around that although I'm taking six pills a day of, of levodopa of one form or another. I'm nowhere near the maximum load and I can load up more. So I, I, I don't now count because the problem is you never know because I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, have my first pill at about 4.30. <laughs> you never know if that's breakfast time or night time or whatever. And so your next one's at about 10 o'clock rather than midday. So your timing is right throughout the entire day. <laughs> so I just take them when I feel when I feel my myself falling to one side. And, and, and so I have no idea how many I take. Luckily, I've got lots of spare ones. So I hope your I'm doctor's just... not listening to this. <laughs> well, he, he did say you're not. You, you can take more if you need to, and and so I do. But I find they only last for about two hours. So I, I tend to have two good hours when everything's absolutely fine. Mm. Then I start to drift a bit. Then then I can be if I don't do anything when I start drifting, I can be completely beyond it and incapable of anything. And and I just lie on the floor mm. and wait for it to pass. And lying on the floor is so much than lying on a bed because I can't get off the bed because you know you can, can't get any purchase and grip on the on, on the mattress. So let's paint a picture of how far you've gone and how far you still got to go. Uh, can you can you almost see in your mind's eye the uh, the finishing line, as it were? There's there we're we're involved in all sorts of things at home, and so there, there is a bit of a requirement for me not to dally dally around too long and not to not to waste time here. But bizarrely enough. Namibia is a great country and in every way, but it's just it's 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 a tourist destination and there are lots of people having seeing the big five and goodness knows what and coming in their safari shirts and their funny hats. And 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 it's not what I want to see and enjoy. I've enjoyed the rawness of Angola, the 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 secrecy of of, of Gabon and, and Gambia and all those sort of places where people don't normally go. And that's what I've enjoyed. Just going to another place with another four by four with a roof box on the top and all the rest of it, looking at animals is, is absolutely not my thing. And although the roads are brilliant, so you can travel around very easily, I might as well be in England. You know, it's just a just a road going through a countryside. You don't like it too easy now, um, but <laughs> that that should mean, and and I presume that it'll be similar in South Africa. That actually you should be not too far away. Is that right? If I wanted to, I could be in Cape Town in about three days' time. I could just belt down the road and some people might say that's what I should do but actually I, I want to enjoy the experience I want to see the most of what Namibia has got and I want to enjoy all the things that most, most people don't go and see and get, don't go and do so I'm going to take my time with Rob and we're going to go and try and find those places that are recommended by Namibians who are here uh, rather than the guidebooks and see what we can find and likewise in South Africa um, I, I could just drive to Cape Town and do an interview and say, that's it, I've done it, I've finished, bye-bye everybody, speak to you soon. But I want to go to Rourke's Drift and I want to go to Isandwana and I want to see, see Spion Cop and all those extraordinary places which are ingrained in our history because um, while I'm there, I'd be mad not to, but it's a, it's a big old country and um, I've got to try and work out how to fit that all in. But you'll be there before Christmas. <laughs> I will be there before Christmas and I will be home before Christmas. I'm not sure the van will be home before Christmas because, of course, I've got to find a boat to bring it back. <laughs> well, good luck. Um, safe travels. And it sounds like things are going well. Things are brilliant at the moment. But many, many things go, wheels fall off wagons very quickly. <laughs> things can go wrong. Do I look the wrong way for the long, too long? <laughs>